All right, we are back with Casey Marshall. Um, we were just talking about what she's working on now with adaptive fashion as a uh, fashion designer. And um, I'm just wondering with your job now, are you, you know, you're working with a company who's working on adaptive clothes, but are you experiencing any sort of pushback with some ideas because of budgeting concerns or anything like that? I know, like for me as an actor, I get told all the time that shows want to be more inclusive. But then when you ask for something like a ramp or something that might cost um, some sort of money for accessibility, it's like you get a lot of pushback. But then those same shows are, you know, flying in celebrities and spending $20,000 on a whim for what that celebrity wants. Uh, so then the accessibility, we can't afford that, but we can afford, you know, a, a pumpkin flown in from Guam or something. <laughs> so I'm just curious, um, at this job or other jobs, have you experienced something like that where you get, you're getting pushback because of money reasons? I think uh, the biggest thing, like, as a whole in the adaptive world is how expensive that adaptive clothing currently is. And that's something that I'm really trying to um, convey to brands that it should be at a lower price point. Um, if you look mm -hmm. at uh, just numbers and how many people with disabilities are on um, disability income versus people who work, even um, people with higher paying jobs usually have lots of out-of-pocket costs, medical bills, and things like that. So they're less likely to splurge on clothing. Um, so I think that one of the most important things about adaptive fashion is keeping it affordable because making it more affordable makes it more accessible. Um, whenever it is at that high price point, who is it accessible for? Um, it really cuts down who can uh, purchase that. Wow, that is so true. I'm really glad you said that because I have noticed like there's a specific pair of jeans that I want to buy and mm -hmm. they have, um, they can be altered or they already have zippers up the sides and they are really expensive yeah. and it's limiting, you know, um, there are brands out there starting to market to people with disabilities, but they are super expensive and it does make it inaccessible. I'm like, especially for people with disabilities, we need like an H&M that's all about adaptive wear, you know, yeah, like yeah. that's an affordable price point for all. Um, I'm all about like Nordstrom Rack and I literally was just shopping in an H&M yesterday looking yeah. for a blazer. So it's like, you know, I, um, I want high quality. Um, that's a shirt that's like going to last for more than two days, but also has adaptive, you know, maybe doesn't have the tiny little buttons that you have to, you know, spend 10 minutes buttoning just as someone who doesn't have dexterity issues, you know? So yeah, I'm really glad you said that. Yeah. Do you have any uh, stores that you're a big fan of right now for shopping for adaptive wear? I know we mentioned like Zappos Adaptive. Um, do you have any that you would recommend our viewers check out? Yeah, I think um, Zappos is one of the major ones and their customer service just makes it so easy uh, to find what you're looking for because they really do help you. Um, it's almost like having your own personal shopper when you have issues and like they really can point you in the right direction. Uh, so I really like that about Zappos. And then Patty and Ricky yeah. is another one that is great for looking um, for adaptive products and it's owned by someone with a disability which makes it, I think, more special too. Awesome. Oh my gosh, I'll have to check out Patty and Ricky. I think I already follow them on Instagram, but I will yeah. have to check it out for sure. Yeah, great tip. Listeners, listen up. <laughs> cool. Oh my gosh, Casey, this is so fun. I feel like I just saw you, but it literally has been since pre-pandemic times in 2019 when I saw you. Yeah, yeah. it's wild. It's wild. I mean, New York is like back and it's feeling sort of safe. It's not quite the same, you know, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wearing masks into places, getting vaccination cards checked. Um, as someone with a disability living in such a big city, 
how has it been for you, get, you know, getting through this pandemic? Did you go back home at all? Did you st stick, stick it out here in the city? How has it been for you? I, um, whenever it was at first, uh, you know, the first week when things were like starting to unfold, we didn't know how serious it was going to be. Toilet paper was flying off the shelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like way back then, I actually, I had a trip home scheduled because um, I was going to go and see my family for a couple of weeks. I had just accepted a job position. So I was going to go home for a couple of weeks uh, and see them. And then all of that started happening. And I moved the trip up because, you know, we were worried that everything was going to shut down. We were like worried that planes and flights were going to get canceled and shut down. Um, and I didn't want to be stuck here. So I, I got on the plane and I went home. It was supposed to be for two weeks. Uh, I got there in March. And I ended up leaving in September. So I, yeah, I wrote it out at home uh, with my family because I, I lived in a studio apartment by myself at the time. Uh, and mm -hmm. I did not want to be stuck in lockdown all by myself. So it was definitely a good idea for me to go home and get to be around other people. <laughs> For sure. That's so yeah. nice. I I can't imagine how hard it must have been on our mental health, especially for people quarantining alone in studio apartments. I've seen some very artistic short films made during the pandemic by people living alone. And I'm just like blown away by the creativity and the resilience that I saw. Um, it's really incredible. I think, you know, as people with disabilities living in New York during a pandemic still, um, it, it warms my heart to see New York still taking the pandemic so seriously. Um, like I mentioned, like here in New Orleans, you still have to get your vaccination cards checked at, at restaurants, um, but people are not wearing masks outside like at all anymore. Um, and it is a little concerning, you know, um, for people with disabilities, especially if they want to come check out a parade and are, you know, vulnerable, more, more vulnerable to the pandemic because we're all vulnerable. <laughs> right. um, that might hold you back from experiencing something that everyone else gets to do because no one's wearing a mask, but you, you know, really do need to and should only be around people in masks. So. I just think it's important to still remember there is a pandemic and I am grateful to live in a city that is still taking it very seriously. Um, for me, I had COVID and I still have um, some chest tightness every now and then from it. Um, you know, the lingering effects are really concerning. And since we don't know much about it, I think it's still really important to, you know, keep in mind that this pandemic is raging on with <laughs> A little bit of no end in sight. So as yeah. people who live in such a big city, it's concerning, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Casey, thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I feel like we talked through a lot, but I'm worried I didn't ask you as many questions as I should have. <laughs> Is there anything we didn't touch on that you would really like to mention and make sure our viewers know either about your journey to New York or adaptive fashion or your job right now, anything like that? Yeah, um, I guess my Instagram, I've been trying to show a little bit about, um, you know, the disability experience. Um, recently, I had posted about my experience of trying to get my wheelchair fixed um, and how the process takes months. Uh, so I really try to use my Instagram to, um, educate. I think a lot of people don't realize what it is like um, for someone in, mm -hmm. with a disability to live in New York. Um, I've talked about, uh, you know, the subway being inaccessible. Um, I've talked about, you know, disability pride and all kinds of topics related to disability. Um, and I hope to like continue that. Yeah, um, that's Instagram, awesome. Yeah, so my handle is uh, Casey. So it's K-A-Y-C-E-E -E Couture. Um, on Instagram. Awesome. Go follow at Casey Couture on Instagram. And I am at Bionic Brunette. So if you can't find her, click on me, on my follow, my people I'm following, and she'll be right there. K-A-Y-C-E-E. -E. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, Casey, for joining us. I've so appreciated um, hearing your perspective on the fashion industry and 
New York. Um, we could have done a whole show on the accessibility of public transit in New York City. Um, maybe that'll be the next time we chat. <laughs> I am, I just have a follow up question actually about that. Because yeah. um, I wrote a short film about accessibility on the New York City subway system and how frustrated I was to learn that when Astoria was adding these brand new gorgeous um, subway stops, uh, well, they were refurbishing them all. Um, they neglected to add elevators or escalators to all but one of them. And they spent probably billions of dollars at this point, making them look prettier, making them, um, I guess, fixing them up, you know? Uh, so I'm just wondering, like, when you travel through New York, I know for a lot of us, we prefer the subways, but so many of them are inaccessible that I've ended up taking the bus a few times and I find the bus system way more confusing than the subways and way less efficient and um, routine, you know? So I'm just wondering like when you travel around, have you gotten stuck under the subways and not been able to get to somewhere with an elevator? And do you use the bus <laughs> because of that? Um, just curious on your experience. Yeah, I hate the subway. I don't take the subway yeah. anymore. I had one too many times of like getting there and an elevator being broken, even though, you know, you have to check before you even leave to see what elevators mm -hmm. are running. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I checked, I checked. Uh, and it was actually when I lived in Harlem. So I was supposed to get off at like 125th. And I ended up being all the way up at Yankee Stadium uh, because that was the Whoa. next one. Next one with an elevator. And then I had to get out there and try to find a bus to take me back in to, I mean, it was a, it was a whole mess. After that experience, I did not trust the subway anymore. Uh, so I take mm -hmm. the bus mainly, and the bus takes so much longer. It really is like not efficient, but it's safer for me. Um, I know mm -hmm. that I'm not gonna get trapped somewhere. And I'm, that's the thing too, is like, you don't know which ones are going to be broken. So then you'll get somewhere and you're at an entirely different place than your destination. Uh, so for me, I just think it's much easier to take the bus because it's much more reliable. Um, but yeah, no, they, they're they not good with accessibility and the ones that have elevators aren't necessarily working elevators. So um, wow. it was interesting that you said that about uh, them not adding elevators when they redid it. Cause I think back, uh, Jeremy Scott, I think did a show, uh, in an elevator platform. Uh, did you see oh the about gosh. that? I didn't know. I'll have to check that out. Jeremy yeah, Scott. So he, okay. had, he had a model in a wheelchair, like in the show and he added, um, a ramp that went down the stairs. Uh, it was like one of those like stair lifts. So that way, uh, it was a power wheelchair user could be a model in the show. So I'm like, if Jeremy Scott can make it accessible, you would think that the city would do a better job about it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Bravo, Jeremy Scott, accessible <laughs> runway fashion show. Yeah. Shame on New York City transportation. Right. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, I uh, and shout out to Theater Breaking Through Barriers, who actually did a short play about a wheelchair user getting stuck underground. And it was so funny and so yeah. moving. Um, oh my gosh, we could chat all day. Thank you, Casey, for sharing your perspective. It is so appreciated and so needed. Um, I've had the best time chatting with you. And again, follow Casey on Instagram at Casey Couture. Um, I can't wait until next time. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you.